is moving towards regulating nicotine levels in cigarettes. For more on all of this, let's bring in the FDA Commissioner, Dr. Scott Gottlieb. Doctor, thank you for being here today. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I, I know that this is part of an effort that you began last summer to try and take a look at regulating nicotine. Um, wh wh what's the latest step in this? Right, so we're trying to reduce nicotine levels in combustible cigarettes to minimally or non-addictive levels. Um, and we took the first big step yesterday towards that effort in issuing what we call an advanced notice of proposed rulemaking. It's really the first step in the rulemaking process to try to pursue the regulations that will ultimately lead to the reduction in nicotine levels in cigarettes. And so this is the first big step towards that process. The next step after we go through a comment period is to issue a notice of proposed rulemaking and then a final rule. You, generally, you think of Republican administrations and you think of less regulation, um, less involvement by some of the agencies on things like this. Why is this important to you? Well, we're looking to try to um, transition smokers to modified risk products, less harmful products. We see a lot of potential from new product innovation that's coming on the market, including electronic cigarettes and electronic nicotine delivery systems. It might be um, modified risk ways to receive nicotine if you're an adult who still wants to get access to satisfying levels of nicotine. And so by regulating the nicotine content in combustible cigarettes, we think we can more quickly migrate smokers off of combustible tobacco onto modified risk products or, or preferably um, encourage them to quit altogether. It's not the nicotine that causes the cancer, it's all the toxins in the combustion. So it's really the combustible cigarettes that are the problem. I've seen ads that run on television a lot lately um, that are saying things like, this is from a group saying, let's make sure we do modify uh, nicotine levels. They say that the cigarette companies intentionally concocted the levels of nicotine in these cigarettes to try and addict people um, in the highest possible levels. Do you think that's true? Well, the cigarettes have certainly been engineered over time to have very high levels of nicotine, and what makes them so deadly is they're such an efficient delivery vehicle. They deliver the nicotine so quickly to the brain, um, and that's, that's part of what makes them so addicting and makes the nicotine itself so addicting. Um, and so the cigarettes have been modified over time. We know that now. Um, in order to be better nicotine delivery vehicles, and that's what keeps people coming back. That's what gets people addicted. Scott, so the big question, I think, on e-cigarettes has always been not that you want to take people who are smoking combustible cigarettes and, and, and obviously migrate them off, and, and, and e-cigarettes may be a way to do it. But the other question is, is it also a way to get people to start smoking? Maybe not combustible cigarettes. And, and uh, the question is, long-term, from a culture and society perspective, would we be frustrated and upset if a whole new generation uh, started smoking these cigarettes all the time? Particularly with right. teens that, being so right. attracted to it. Right. The youth access is a, is a big concern. We're going to be taking some enforcement steps and other steps very soon to try to better address some of the youth use that we see. The youth use is growing. It's a, it's a major concern to the agency. And you're right. If all we end up doing is, is addicting a whole new generation on nicotine through e-cigarettes, then we will have done, done a bad service uh, to this country. So we're, we're going to be vigorously pursuing the youth use as we try to make this transition for the adult smokers. But it's a big concern um, right now uh, that kids are getting access to the e-cigarettes and some of them are going to get addicted. Remember, our, our statute is a net public health benefit, so we're looking at the, the overall public health benefit right. to the entire population. In looking at that, we overweight the youth use. And so if we can get 10 adult smokers to quit, but, but we, one new kid gets started on nicotine for every 10 adult smokers, we're going to overweight the assessment of that one kid who's going to become a smoker because of what we've done. So the long-term negative effects of nicotine aren't that bad, Scott. I, I, you know, it's very weird to induce a, a, a dependency for no reason. It's not like alcohol. I mean, some people think you know they enjoy relaxing. Well, what's the is nicotine a stimulant? A little well, bit. It's, a, a, it's not a completely benign substance for what's sure. It feel? What's, what's, the, what's good about it? Well, it, you know, it's a legal substance. Right no. now, it's a legal substance. Right, I'm not, not going to... What's I'm the not, thrill of, of using it? Because is it just, you know, all of us like maybe that. have an oral fit. You know, sometimes it feels good. I don't know why kid, kids want to do the vaping thing. Maybe there's an, you know, an oral thing that, that's sort of satisfying or something. But nicotine itself doesn't seem like something you want to induce a dependency for. I have to get rid of it completely. What good is it? I don't know. Well, weird. I'm not in a position to say we should ban nicotine right now. It's a legal substance, but it is an addict it is an addicting good substance, it, and in an adolescent brain, it it does have uh, have it effects. It's not a completely benign substance. Wow. I would I would never proclaim that it is. How does it but compare it's a legal to something substance. like caffeine? Um, 
far more addicting than caffeine, certainly. Um, and you see, you do see some comorbid psychiatric illness in, in people who are heavy users of nicotine. So there is something that nicotine is doing um, to the brain for some people where it, it is providing some, um, some effect. So, you know, it's not a completely benign substance. There's no question about that. But adult, adults do have the ability to get access to nicotine if they want it. You know, the, pre the preferable route, if you, if you can't quit smoking altogether and you have, or you can't quit nicotine altogether, would be to get it through a medicinal product. And so we're taking a lot of steps to try to, try to increase the pathway towards more medicinal nicotine like products as well. Like a patch or gum? Like a patch or a gum and different kinds of delivery vehicles that deliver it more quickly or through other routes where it might be more satisfying to an ex-smoker. So we want to see more product innovation in the medicinal products as well. Doctor, you are opening this up for public comment. What, what pushback, if any, do you expect from the, from the industry? Well, we haven't had a lot of pushback um, right now. I think it's still, people, most people recognize we're still at the beginning of this process, and so I expect it to get more difficult as we, as we proceed through it. But we're pretty committed to the pathway that we've set out on, and I, I plan to get that notice of proposed rulemaking out after, you know, after a reasonable comment period and after we learn from the public uh, the best course to go forward in terms of, you know, defining that rule, crafting it. Commissioner Gottlieb, want to thank you for your time. Always good to see you. Thanks a lot. By the way, this gives us an opportunity to let you know that CNBC is going to be hosting our first ever healthcare conference that's coming up on March 28th. It's called Healthy Returns: Investing in Healthcare Innovation. We'll be featuring top government officials, CEOs, innovators, and investors, including Commissioner Gottlieb, who we were just speaking with. You can go to cnbc.com slash healthy returns if you're interested in tickets or more information on that.